Hey, St. John's, Pastor Sam here, coming to you in the sanctuary. You know this place. Uh, it looks a little different today than it normally does. Lots of empty pews. Um, the, the light this time of day, like 1130, is nice coming through these windows. I like it. Uh, this place is, is, I know, important to a lot of you. And, I, and my guess is a lot of you, as you see this, you kind of think like, man, I wish that I could be there. I wish that I could be in that room. I wish that I could be there to experience um, the people that I love so much to, to, to be with there. And, and I could experience the things about that room that bring me great comfort and great joy. Things like um, the, receiving the body and blood of Christ uh, at, the ta at the table, at his table, and, and knowing that along with that, we have his promise of his presence ever with us. And even better, his forgiveness. Things like... Um, like looking at the baptismal font um, and being assured that uh, because we are baptized, we have the promise of the Holy Spirit with us. And maybe in that very font you were baptized, and so it brings you even greater comfort. Or maybe somebody you love so much was baptized right there. And you can look at it and you can say, I don't know a lot, but I know that there, the promise of Jesus mixed with water, and I was given faith. And that faith through the Holy Spirit is something I cling to right now in this weird time. Maybe it's that in this place you confess your sins often. And when you do that, um, it's met with the promise of forgiveness that Christ gives us. And, and truly in this very room, you're given absolution. You're absolved, forgiven for your sins. Because Christ tells us that's how it works. Or maybe it's, it's that you come to this place to be reminded of the promises of Jesus, of the word of God in its entirety, that there's law, that there's the gospel, there's, there's grace, and, and that the promises of Jesus are those things which both come to us right now for comfort, and, and they are also that which we carry with us forward into a place of comfort in the future, into assurance that he is with us always. All those things could be uh, things that this room um, conjures up for you, uh, memories of. And I'm not trying to bum you out because you can't be here right now as we're in this COVID-19 lockdown. Uh, well, it's not the right word. Shut down to some degree. I'm not trying to bum you out. In fact, the thing that, that it ties those things together is good news for us because the reason all of those things bring us comfort their means of grace, the promises of Jesus. In fact, uh, in the sacraments, there are even commands of Jesus to us to do. But the thing that ties them together, that unifies them in our experience, is that the word of God runs through them all. And we can still access the word of God. We can access the, so many of these promises of Jesus, even in our conversations with each other. I hope you are finding ways via FaceTime or phone calls or, uh, or other methods to talk to the other brothers and sisters of Christ, both here at St. John's and in the church, greater church, and that when you talk to them, you are reminding them of the promises of Jesus. I hope that's true. Um, and I hope that uh, the content that Pastor Nate, Pastor Mike, and I share with you, um, Josh, and other people here at St. John's will be helpful for you in coming to this word as well and remembering that there is something about the word of God that's different. It's performative. It does things as it's proclaimed to us. And there, there's a big difference between kind of knowing out that there's some sort of forgiveness out there and being told Jesus knows you and forgives you your sins. So we're going to be reminding you of that as often as we can. It's the word that brings us comfort. It's the word that brings us hope. And indeed, it's even the word that continues us to keep us strong in our faith. Um, Hebrews chapter 2 uh, says that we must pay much closer attention to the thing that we have heard, lest we drift away from it. And, and the thing that we've heard, of course, is the promise of Jesus about his resurrection, uh, uh, about his claiming each of us uh, by his Holy Spirit. So that's the thing we're going to cling to in this in this time. Now, today I want to talk just really, really quickly um, about about Mary, the mother, the mother of God. And Mary uh, is, is is such an interesting character for us because she's somebody who has to confront a change of identity, so to speak, um, that, that is forced upon her by God and the Holy Spirit. A change of identity, at least in her own mind. 
And before we do that, just I want you to think really quickly. What is your identity? How is it that you uh, define yourself? When you wake up in the morning and you think, I'm a this, what is the this that you think about? Do you, do you wake up um, and think, I am a, I am a, a chef, I am a teacher, uh, I am a, a banker, I am, a, what is it, a lawyer? Do you think that? Do you, do you wake up and you think, I am um, that person's husband or that person's wife as they lay right next to you? Do you wake up like I do and think, why is there a knee in my face? Oh, right, I'm a dad and there's bodies all over the place. What do you wake up and think about yourself? What do you wake up and, and, and say, that's who I am? Because for Mary, there were a few different things to that. Young, engaged, a virgin. These, all of these things were part of who she was. Diligent, I think, and certainly highly favored by God, though she might not have realized that yet. The favored one is what she's called. In Luke chapter 1, the, 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 the angel Gabriel comes to visit her, and he comes to tell her, you're going to have a baby. And not just any baby, um, the one that you will conceive in your womb, he says, you'll call him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. This is who you're going to conceive. And Mary doesn't understand. She even says, you don't understand. Part of my identity is that I'm a virgin. There can't be a baby. Uh, and he says, no, the Holy Spirit's going to do it. He's going to make this thing happen. Um, and and the, this child is going to be called holy, the son of God. Now, Mary is given a few options there as her identity is challenged. And, and I might even say that you're given similar options today. Uh, it could be that the, some of the things that you wake up thinking about yourself, I'm a teacher, I, I, I'm a baker, I'm a whatever it is, are challenged right now as you're, you're kind of being pinned closer to home much more often than you were before. Maybe you're just totally, you're there, you're socially, you're, you're, you're following the rules and you have socially distanced appropriately and properly and that's awesome, but, but it could have taken away some of the things that you think that you are, Right? Like if, if you're a baseball player or a soccer player and you can't be there practicing with a team right now, it, it might have taken away some of these things and changed uh, who you are. And it could be really easy for you to respond like Mary could have responded saying, no, that's not, this, is, this doesn't work. You don't understand. I am this person. But as God uh, comes to you and he, and he tells you who you are, it's kind of worth listening and paying attention. And I think that's what Mary's done. See, before this moment in the scriptures, we've been given lots of promises about who we are. And I, I would venture to guess Mary knew them. That in the, in the beginning, when humans were made, when mankind was made, we were told that it was made in the image of God. That that means something. And that after that, we were told that before you were, you were formed or knit together in your mother's womb, he knew you. You were his. Later, after this point, we, we read in scriptures that you are a chosen people. You, the, the people of Jesus, you're a royal priesthood. The people of Jesus, you're a holy nation. That's you. You are God's special possession. That's who you are. And that you, uh, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. You are a holy nation, a special possession. And that's even true when you are staring at your TV and it's saying, do you want to keep watching? Are you sure you've watched 50 episodes of The Office in a row or whatever it is you're watching, right? It's even true today. It's even true as your vocations are, are changed, as your expectations are maybe even shattered, as things you so looked forward to are canceled. It's even true as all the stuff you thought you knew about yourself and what you do in this world and what you provide for this world is challenged. It's even true today. See, uh, Martin Luther, when he talks about the Lord's Prayer in his small catechism, he, he talks about the, 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 peti the petition we pray, thy will be done. And he says, God's will is going to be done. But when we, when we pray those words, thy will be done, we pray that it may be done among us also. 
That's our prayer today, that as we sit in our houses or, or, or we take walks that are appropriate distances from other people, or we try to get, get our work done in this world, but challenge in so many different ways, as we, as we face all of these uncertainties and all of these new things, our prayer has to be, thy will be done. Uh, because we are his special possession. And of course, that's our desire. Now, we don't know what tomorrow is going to look like. Stuff has changed so fast that we don't even know what later today is going to look like, but he does. And so uh, our, my prayer for you, Pastor Nate's prayer for you, church, is that you would be ones who are right now in this bizarre time praying, thy will be done amongst me. You would trust that you are his special possession, and then therefore, like Mary, you would respond by saying, Behold, uh, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. Church, as you uh, think right now about what can I be doing, what should I, what should I be doing, what could I be doing, uh, ask yourself, what would a servant of the Lord do? Call some people. Remind them of the promises of Jesus. Remind them that he knows them and he loves them. And yes, this does not make sense in our expectations or in terms of what we kind of conceived our identity to be, but he loves us anyway, and we are his. Amen.